I have a theory that the best way to get to know a person is to row with them at 6 a.m. every weekend. If this theory holds true, I should know Josh Rafelson pretty well. Even though we have only known each other for four short years, I feel like I do, and I'm proud to call him my friend. I have shared some of my favorite high school memories with him. Whether we are embarrassing ourselves in Teletubby costumes, surprising someone with a birthday card, or even just watching a bad movie, we always have a good time. Josh, however, is also a very determined individual. One of my favorite Josh moments was when he recounted a preliminary workout for an NROTC program, uh, which with such a great sense of excitement that I myself got excited. Next year, Josh will enter that Marine NROTC program, and after four years of training, he will spend another five years serving our country. Josh, this is a commitment. This commitment and your passion for it is truly admirable. So everyone, please stand to greet my friend, Josh Rafelson. Thank you, please be seated. Thanks, Mike, for the introduction. Before I begin, I would also like to extend a thank you to my advisor, Mrs. Bill Meyer, for helping me with my speech. Without her and Rev Squire, I don't know if I'd be standing here today. People are curious about my fascination with the military. I've asked myself the same question. Many of the answers to that question relate to my admiration for those who sacrificed their lives for their country. To this day, I vividly remember when my second grade teacher showed our class photographs of the Tomb of the Unknowns located in Arlington, Virginia. I was in awe. The remains of soldiers fighting in World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam are displayed in a simple burial site comprised of three marble caskets along with a large sarcophagus. The three white marble caskets lay along the ground, while the most prominent feature is the sarcophagus of the original unknown soldier from World War I that presides over the three. The sarcophagus is, is approximately 10 feet high, eight feet wide, and weighs about 80 tons. The inscription on the sarcophagus reads, here rests in honor glory, an American soldier known but to God. The tomb gives hope to families of soldiers who never heard what happened to their loved ones after they left for war. All of the unknowns buried at the tomb are awarded the, Mer the Medal of Honor, America's greatest military decoration. The military honors the unknown men who gave the ultimate sacrifice by assigning guards who are willing to make sacrifices of their own because they must patrol the sacred site 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This ritual that began in 1930 still continues today. The guards of the tomb must be between 5'10 and 6'2 and cannot have a waist size that exceeds 30. During their first six months of duty, a guard cannot talk to anyone or watch TV. All of their time off duty is spent stunning the 175 notable people laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. They must commit two years of life to guard the tomb, live in a barracks under the tomb, and cannot drink any alcohol on or off duty for the rest of their lives. They cannot swear in public for the rest of their lives and cannot disgrace the uniform or tomb in any way. After two years, each guard is given a wreath pin that is worn on his or her lapel, signifying service guarding the tomb. There are only 400 presently worn. The guards must obey these rules for the rest of their lives or give up the wreath pin. While guarding the tomb, each guard takes 21 steps, hesitates for 21 seconds, turns, and repeats. The tradition alludes to and symbolizes the 21 gun salute, which is the highest honor given to any military or foreign dignitary. The soldiers assigned to guarding the tomb believe that it is the highest honor that can be afforded to a service person. In 2003, during Hurricane Isabel, the dedication of the guards was put to the test. While the House and Senate took two days off in anticipation of the storm, the guards were given permission to suspend the assignment. The guards, in response to this unusual occurrence, said, no way, sir, and continued taking their 21 steps to pay their respects and guard the fallen. 
while the House and Senate left their posts. The symbolism, significance, and awe associated with the Tomb of the Unknowns and the honorable way in which the guards accept their duty have inspired me to join the military. To me, the, guard serves, the, the tomb serves as a reminder that soldiers don't put their lives on the line for personal glory or shiny medals. The anonymity of the soldiers laid to rest reminds us of a much bigger and greater cause. Instead of focusing on an individual, those who visit the tomb are able to focus on the nation to which we proudly belong. The military functions as a unit. As high school students, we should stop and think about the type of sacrifices we are willing or able to make for the greater good, for our friends, our family, and our school. We also think about the value of traditions that, re that remind us to behave in the most honorable way. What lessons of duty, honor, and discipline have we learned at Episcopal that will sustain us through life? We should pause for a moment and allow ourselves in this place of worship to appreciate those lessons. During moments of prayer in this chapel, I have quietly contemplated my answer to the frequently asked question, why the Marines? In fact, since November, my mom has asked me the same question monthly, followed by the question, isn't that dangerous? And the statement, I don't want you to die. Looking back, I think I've never given her a solid response. On separate occasions, I've told my mom that I wanted to join the Marines because I love my country. I feel a call to serve. I want to lead the best. I want to defend the helpless abroad. Or, tri or, or trivial reasons, such as when I become an officer, I get a saber. Or I like to do push-ups. In all honesty, the real reason is that it just feels right. I think about why it feels right constantly. Yes, I do love my country, and I do like push-ups. But why do I feel drawn to the Marines? I believe that the biggest contribution to, be, to me wanting to be a Marine is their motto, Semper Fi, meaning always faithful or always loyal. It seems sort of superficial to want to dedicate your life to something because of its motto. But to me, Semper Fi is a core belief that I have, and I want the people around me to feel the same. If I'm at war in the middle of a firefight, I want people who live Semper Fi and come hell or high water are going to be there for me as I will be for them. As high schoolers, our loyalty to our school, our work, and our friends is put to the test every day. Personally, I know it's easy to come to school late, do our homework assignment five minutes before class, or give up on a friendship over something insubstantial. The only thing I can say is I'm still working on it but it is important to have the goal of always striving to be loyal to the things we care about. The same idea of being always faithful through any detriment applies to my faith in God. To me, life is like lunch at EA. Some days it's easy and great, like when we have chicken patties. But some days it's tough to get through, like when we have breakfast for lunch. <laughs> Regardless of what's for lunch or what kind of day you have, it's important to remain faithful to God. At Episcopal, I believe that as a school, we need to maintain steadfast in our Christian beliefs and remain faithful to what we believe, stay true to our name, and act according to what is right instead of what is popular. To me, another act of being Semper Fi is having faith that what you're doing is right. A line in the Marine Corps hymn reads, First to fight for the right and freedom, and to keep our honor clean, we are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. To answer my question of, to answer my mom's question of, isn't it dangerous? As you can see from the hymn, the answer is yes. However, I want to be a Marine for the reason given by Mr. Stone last year as to why the hyphen is the most important punctuation mark. No matter what that number is across my birth date on my tombstone, I want the hyphen to represent the effort I put into fighting for freedom and justice with a clean coat of honor. I know you've heard it before, but try to live a life of character and live your core beliefs. As shown by the guards at the Tomb of the Unknowns, 
Living a life of honor requires sacrifices, great and small. I'd like to leave you with a quote from President Reagan. When the Lord calls me home, whenever that day may be, I will leave with the greatest love for this country of ours and eternal optimism for its future. I now begin the journey that will lead me into the sunset of my life. I know that for America, there will always be a bright dawn ahead. Semper Fi.